Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mark Orson and is your Babylon. Today's video, we're gonna cover plant lights. So this video isn't sponsored by anybody. So all the things that you're gonna see today, the equipment I'm gonna show you is just stuff that I bought, it's stuff that I like, and it's the pain that I've gone through to find out the bits that work for me. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be beneficial to everybody. I've also put more information about where I've gotten things in the description below, and you can also jump through the segments of this video to get to the bit that you need. So in this video, I'm going to try and demystify artificial plant lights. I'm gonna cover the various types of lights that are available, all the colors and spectrums, why we need artificial plant lights for our plants. So let's get into it. Firstly, I'd just like to talk about why we actually use plant lights or artificial lighting for our plants. Basically, the main source of energy for all your plants is light. It's not the plant food that you're giving it or the water or anything like that. It is light. They need light to grow and to develop. So if your plants aren't getting enough light, they'll give you signs like they're starting to get leggy or they'll produce smaller foliage or they may even start to die off or go dormant. So plants need light in some form, whether it's natural or artificial. So when you start looking into artificial plant lights, it can be bewildering. There's so many types, shapes and colors out there, but in essence, you've got three core types of plant lights. You've got fluorescent lights, high intensity discharge lights, and LED, which is what I use. So all these lights come with different pros and cons, but you need to think about your budget, so how much you want to spend on lighting, where you're going to put the light, because you might need to think about, does it need a stand, is it going to hang, those types of things, and how much electricity does it consume. For me personally, I like to use LED lights. They generally have a higher price point, they're more expensive to get, but they have a way lower electricity consumption, and they last a lot longer. Whereas fluorescent lights are probably the cheapest type to get, but they don't last as long and they might consume more electricity. Now time for some pros and cons on the different lights. You can see why I've chosen LED. Second best for me would be fluorescent, but that's personal choice because you might want to spend a bit less on the lighting. There's no way I'm ever going to have hid lights. And then you've got colour wavelengths or spectrums of light. Now that's another thing that's confusing for some people as well, because there's sort of red lights, blue lights, purple lights, white lights, like what does it all mean? The various color spectrums of lights are generally available for fluorescent type lights or LED lights. Now the entire color spectrum from blue all the way to red pretty much helps with photosynthesis all round, but they kind of help in different ways. So the blue lighting is mostly to help the plant get stockier, the other end of the spectrum, the red light, is mostly used for helping develop flowers and fruits and young seedlings and allowing that plant to stretch its plant material. But for me and my houseplant purposes, I'm just going for a full spectrum light because I'm growing plants in all of those stages. I'm not just sort of farming young germinations or anything like that. I want to do the entire thing, so that's why I go full spectrum. All plants have different needs when it comes to lighting. So you need to go and do a bit of research about where you need to place your plants, what kind of lighting that they require, and potentially how far away they need to be from your artificial lighting. I'm gonna cover now the lights that I use, the journey that I've been through about how I got to that and the struggles that I found basically. I think that's gonna help a lot of people out. So back in the day, I used to use influorescent lights. They were absolutely fine. They got hot, they were cheap, they consumed a lot of electricity, but that was basically the technology back then. And then I shifted to LED, so they had a higher price point, more expensive, but generally they last longer and they consume far less electricity. So if you can budget for LED, probably look towards that because they're going to last you much longer. The next thing that I hear after having LED lights was IP rating. So ingress protection is basically just a rating system that tells you how well your electrical equipment is protected against particles and water. So I got really stuck on that because I was like, ooh, in my cabinets and things like that, I am spraying and misting and I want it to be protected against, you know, electrical defaults and 
you know, things popping and exploding. So for about a year and a half, two years, I was just obsessed with trying to find LED lights that met a really good IP rating. So a lot of the LED lights that you'll find are generally used for hanging or placing by the side of plants and they're not really getting sprayed on or inside cabinets and things like that. Some lights are actually, people are putting them inside their cabinets. I'm talking about cabinets because they're behind me. Um, and those lights are really designed for um, tanks that have got, you know, lizards and tarantulas in or something like that. So again, they're generally sitting on top of the tank or the vivarium, terrarium, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they're not really getting splashed with water and things like that. So we're gonna go and have a look in my cabinet now. I'm just gonna show you some of the lights that I'm using in there and why I like them and what I found beneficial about them. In my original cabinet, I have the original IKEA grow lights. They don't even make these anymore. I really like them. They do have an IP rating, but they just stopped making them. As soon as these fail, I am going to switch them out for one that I'm going to show you towards the end. And now we're going to go and look at my other cabinet. So like I said, I've been through many plant lights, LED lights. I think I've probably been through about five or six. Um, and then I moved to these lights here, which are by a company called Arcadia Jungle Dawn. They are, they were fantastic. I won't knock them. They have lasted me a while, but then this is when I hit the IP rating issue. I wanted lights that can go in my cabinets that I feel happy about spraying with mist and water and they're not gonna pop or explode. So these didn't have an IP rating that I wanted of at least 65. 65 is what I'd recommend because that basically means it's the highest level of solid protection and then it can get sprays of water and jets on it, which is the five for water. And then I have now moved to these lights, so I'm slowly swapping them out. So this light here is by Mother Life, and this is their Plant Spectrum light bar. And what I like about this is it can attach through these little connections here. Excuse my little uh, hygrometer. Um, it's a full spectrum light, but the coolest thing about it, which I found, they don't even say this, this unit here, you can actually take this off and you can rotate that any way that you want. So the wire piece, you can position it any way that you want all, all around that circle, if you know what I mean. So that's a plus. But the things that they do talk about is the LED bar inside it can be completely replaced. So you can keep the housing, the wires, the plugs and everything like that, but you can just go and order another LED strip that you then take this off and replace in here. So that means it's kinder to the planet. So this is that's a really, really cool feature. And the housing is IP65 ratings. That's what I was talking about before, where it's protected against solids and water. So I can spray this and I know I'm safe and I'm not gonna have an electrical shock or there's gonna be no bad things that happen there. So I just wanted to show you this. This is the larger one that they do. Um, I think it's called the Plant Spectrum 32, but they're actually designed as well to go on a stand like this. And if I just show you underneath, they just are so easily unscrewed. And then you can use these rails, like I was showing you in my cabinet, they can attach to whatever else you want them to attach to. Um, now they are a higher price point, but what sold it to me was I can keep the housing and all those things. And the bit that matters is that LED strip in the middle. I can just go and order another one of those and keep all the equipment trying to save the planet. So I use this standing one here and I kind of move it around the house a little bit. So here it's just on a timer and it's facing these plants on in this direction because it's quite dark in this area, which is next to my cabinets. So they're all getting the light from the cabinet, but um, on this side as well, they're also getting some light there. But like I said, I just sort of move that one around. It's really handy. It's obviously too big to go into the cabinet, which is why I have the smaller one here. I think that one's the 16, but that's the one in the cabinet and um, I'm really happy with it. So in another video, I'm gonna cover how to measure light, how long you should probably put plants under a light for, because it can get really complex when you're talking about lux and par and which one's the right way and conversions and stuff like that. So that is quite in depth and I'm gonna save that for another video, which gets really geeky. So look forward to that one.
So hopefully I've made this simple enough on houseplant artificial lighting, because when you go out, out and look around and read some information, it can be a little, you know, very confusing and you can go off into rabbit holes here, there and everywhere about suggestions of what to do. But really, if you just think about those core things that I mentioned back there, that is enough to keep you going. So if you have any questions, you want to know anything about what my setup or anything like that on the types of things that I use, please comment below. Please message me on my normal social media channels and I will try and reach out to you. Thanks for watching.